Uh, hey guys, uh, Tim here with the Juice Athlete Compound. Got a request from a few gym owners we work with doing our facility program design to explain to uh, their members and to their coaches and stuff a little more behind the scenes of how we come up with the program we do and how we make that tailored for your gym and for you guys watching this. Uh, so if you're viewing this, thanks for doing all the hard work, first of all, in your workouts. I'm excited to tell you a little more about that. Uh, facility program design is where we work with gym owners to help uh, do their programming for their facility with them, help increase their time they can actually coach you guys and not spend all day in the office, but they get to do what they're best at, which is really great, uh, and hopefully deliver you guys really awesome results. Um, just so you guys know a little about me, my name's Tim Thackery. I'm one of the founders of the Juice Athlete Compound. I was on the U.S. national team for some years. I uh, used to live at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Uh, traveled the world competing in my 20s. Owned a gym for seven years, CrossFit High Voltage in Burbank, uh, up until last summer. And now I do programming uh, pretty much full time. So this is, this is my gig. We got a couple athletes on the Olympic team this year, which is really great. So excited to show you guys a little about behind the scenes of how it all works. Um, I have a list of questions I got from the gym owners. I don't have any notes. We're just winging it. So uh, here, here goes. Uh, number one, uh, what things do you take into consideration when programming for a facility? Uh, great question. This is where it starts with us because anyone can write any program, look on a blog, and you find a million workouts out there. Why does this work and why is this approach so effective is where I want to start with. So we look at things like your facility size, uh, what days most people come to the gym, what is the location, what is the weather, right? Uh, if you're in Minnesota, probably not running in December, right? And if you're in California now, I went running yesterday and that was a little rough. It was 110 outside. So those things matter when we look at that. What's the average age of your clients? What are the goals of everyone there? And obviously there's varied goals, but we want to try and group that to where we have people we're trying to program for for the gym. And we can go, hey, this is what a week now looks like based on uh, all these parts. What's the vision of the owner and the coaches? What do they want for you guys? They communicate that with me and I'm trying to put all these pieces together. Uh, what are the length of your classes? What are the top lifts in your gym for certain areas? Is your gym uh, have a strength bias? Are you stronger than you guys are enduring? And we need to balance that out. Do you guys want to be stronger than you are enduring? That's cool. Like it's up, you know, for what the owner says about this stuff. So, so that's where it starts. And we have some forms we do, some testing uh, weeks we do and stuff to get this information. And I also Facebook stalk you guys. So just so you know, I'm out there watching around and seeing uh, how, how things are progressing. So we put a lot into this. Uh, number two, explain how you incorporate constantly varied into your programming for members to see maximum results. So two parts of this, I guess. Number one is what do you feel a variance means? Do you, does that mean random for you? Or does that mean really more varied in variance? And also is that the assumption that just mixing things up randomly for training is going to produce the same outcomes as, you know, well-designed programming is going to do uh, for you guys over a long period of time, right? So we get into one, obviously, the training versus testing scenarios that uh, I could give you a calculus test and say, take this test, and you don't get it, and I go, well, you got some right, do it again. You got a few more right. Or we can give lessons on calculus and say, hey, well, turns out, Tim, you're not so good at algebra. Let's work on that, and we're going to build you up to maybe doing calculus someday. So that's training and testing on that part. Um, for me, variance comes in different forms. That may be a difficulty of a movement, different rep ranges, different tempos, the effect of a workout we're looking for. And again, people are all different, so to say this workout is going to be this specific effect, you know, I don't think anyone can say that with 100% certainty. Uh, but we have general ideas of what we think. Uh, something should be in what's fueling that workout. Are we loading? Are we deloading? Uh, you know, are, are there, like I think I mentioned tempos before, all these are areas that we can change weekly, daily, monthly, yearly uh, to create different variants in the workout, right? Um, you know, from a Russian kettlebell swing, 
can just be a basic progressive movement onto a kettlebell snatch. So there's variants built in there of all the steps you'd need to do to learn that. Or from a clean grip deadlift to a clean extension to a power clean to a power clean plus front squat to a power clean uh, hang a hang squat clean into something else. So you see how we might build that up into a full clean, right? So uh, that's variance also, not just random. Sometimes things are random, that's good, but no, that's probably where we're more testing than anything else. Um, number three, why are tempos so important and why do some lifts have rep ranges? Awesome, now we're getting into some of the good stuff. Uh, tempos is basically a control over uh, the stimulus I'm looking for for a lift, right? So the general concept, tempos we're not going to do usually for conditioning pieces, so we're talking strengthening. Uh, we are stronger in the lowering phase of a lift than the raising phase, or the eccentric phase versus the contraction phase, right? I always joke that my one rep eccentric back squat is a thousand pounds. I can drop it, I can't stand it up, right? Uh, so that's the idea, that we're stronger lowering than raising. So if we increase the time that we lower, say three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, uh, you know, some weightlifting coaches, like my weightlifting coach Bob Tacano would have athletes do 10 second eccentrics. Brutal, yeah, you're not walking so great the next day, but he needed them to get stronger legs. So that's what you would do, because our body only knows that as the stimulus, not as so much uh, are we lowering or contracting. So by doing this stuff, we can look at weak areas people might have or isolate what we're trying to do and systematically increase that. The second thing is uh, we get control over what's gonna happen a little better. So for newer athletes, they wanna squat down fast and they wanna do this, but we know their knees need to be over their toes and they should have weight uh, proportionately distributed between their feet, heels, and midfoot, right? Some of these basic areas. They're going fast, they may lose it. We want them to do it properly every time, right? So that, that's really important. So on a controlled tempo, three seconds down, now you can see, nope, you're off here. Nope, that's too fast. And so they get really good habits. For advanced, uh, more advanced people, again, let's say an easy three second tempo for conversation's sake. Um, if it's a set of five reps, you might go boom, 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 five reps, done. That'd be one more boom, right, to make five. Uh, there, right, where we know that certain time under tension ranges are going to increase strength uh, gains differently, and usually longer time under tension, that's going to work. So if you're doing five by five, let's say, and the time under tension isn't very long, you're not going to get the same uh, strength stimulus, if that's what we were going for, as you would if we had, hey, you know, a three second lowering, let's do the math. Three seconds down, if it's a five rep thing, and we do three, O oh, X, one. Three seconds down, no pause at the bottom, the X is one, so we're at four. And then uh, the one at the top is one, so we're at five. So five sets of three, O oh, X, one should be 25 seconds of time under tension versus, you know, boom, 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 is just maybe five or six seconds. So that's why we would do that in that instance. There's other reasons, but usually, to increase uh, strength or absolute strength in someone uh, at different levels. So different levels, you'll see different tempo, tempo ranges on that, depending. Um, let's see, why do some lifts have rep ranges? All right, so you might see on there strict pull-ups, uh, five to seven reps, four to five sets, let's say. Each of those is a range. Now, I might not give a range on both of those, but let's say I do. Because of the way our bodies are all built differently, it's impossible to say, well, with exactly 20 seconds, for sure you're going to make this gain. Some people might be more enduring than they are fast. Some people who are sprinters might be really good for one fast contraction, one fast move, and then burn off really quickly, right? So that's why the range is in there that for you, you might be able to do seven reps of uh, strict chin-ups and do it if I'm at five, we're going to be pretty close because it's individualized, right? The way your body operates and mine operates is a little different. It's going to be individualized. So to say everyone has to do six reps or this, it doesn't work. You might have, you might as well have not even come today if you didn't get six. You did, you did it wrong, right? What we're looking more is for intent of the lift and effort and output versus it being if you didn't do six, like I said, you should have, you should have just done jazzercise today. It would have been more effective. I, I don't think that's the truth, right? Um, okay, next one. Can you touch on energy systems and how you program to incorporate 
using different energy systems. This we could talk about for a few days for sure. Um, overview of basic energy systems, we start off with anaerobic elactic power, meaning it's anaerobic, it's without oxygen, it's elactic, meaning there's no lactate produced, and it's power-based. There's also then there's endurance, and then there's anaerobic lactic power, anaerobic lactic endurance, uh, then there's a, you know, aerobic power, aerobic endurance, long kind of Z1 recovery stuff that we could take out to, you know, 60 minutes or two hours, four hours. That's aerobic. Like, uh, again, my weightlifting coach would always joke that one of the most aerobic activities you do is sitting on the couch, right? It's aerobic. It's the oxygen is a fuel source. That's an aerobic. I tell my wife I'm training aerobics right now, babe. Sorry. Don't, get, don't, don't tell me to go run. I'm just doing my aerobics right now. Uh, so that said, each area of the energy systems we're looking for, and we generally want balanced energy system stuff. We need touches of each for everyone. Right? That's the idea. Now, some people may need more of one side, more of another side. That's where you know feedback, goal of the gym, coaching, coaching feedback uh, comes in, right? But the idea that each energy system gets trained and tapped out differently uh, is real, right? For our aerobic system, it may take a certain amount of time to train it, and it needs so long to recover. Anaerobic stuff, right? Imagine if Monday we did super hard full-out sprints, 100-meter sprints. Tuesday probably doesn't feel so good. You're not so snappy, right? Or if you did one rep lifts on Monday, Tuesday, brain's a little fried. You need something else, right? And so it's not just, oh, you're being weak. There's actual physiological reasons for this, okay? So... That's why we layer them as partly for recovery of that system so it can be trained fully, and that can recover. Once, let's say, the anaerobic system's recovering, well, guess what? We didn't use any oxygen to train that, so we might train the aerobic system now while anaerobic is recovering. We might train, you know, uh, you know lactic endurance where we're using, you know, uh, so, some other stuff as fuel sources. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but the idea is that's why uh, we have different ones. Each workout has a different focus, right? So it's something we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and that's, again, going back to the difference between training and testing. We're trying to improve your ability to move fast, not just seeing, oh, that's how fast you move. That's, that's not so good, Tim. Like, uh, we want to actually improve this through ongoing training. Okay, um, let's see. So number 4B, why do some workouts have a percentage of a lift versus an RX weight? Again, a great question. I like this one. And this is, again, where coaching and your coaches come in and really individualize this for you guys and make it uh, effective, right? Um, uh, again, RX weights, if I say, hey, you're going to do Fran at 95 pounds, that's a test, right? Well, I'm saying at this weight, we're trying to see what you can do. Uh, other types, we're working relative conditioning, meaning, you know, we're going to go heavy, but heavy for you and me is going to be different. At 135, I might be struggling to get it up and you know uh, get the bar on my shoulders and I'm dying standing and clean up and I need to go work on my eccentric strength obviously uh, for you it might be easy you might do 10 of those and it's like aerobic right so I'm get a different stimulus if I say everyone do 75 percent of your max power clean for these five reps before we do 10 burpees and then rest three minutes or something right so we're trying to go hard now that should be equally taxing relative to each of us okay so that's why uh some days i'm saying hey 80 percent of this for these workouts or 90 percent or 50 percent uh, of this and there's a lot of good research that goes into this uh not going to get into that now but uh it's it's fun stuff to read um okay let's see anything else on that one no but, but again that's days to ask your coaches um why are some workouts so short don't i need to be doing more than a 15 minute wad to get results yeah, uh, you can do that. Uh, I don't think that's the best approach because of the balanced energy system approach we're looking for. And because we want to train those energy systems and then let them recover is really critical, right? So that's one. Second is workouts vary based on how best we want to target that system based on the goals of the gym, based on the arc of the week, month, and year. So we're trying to build that up so you have a bigger aerobic engine but also your anaerobic stuff is fast and you can move quickly. 
Um, the second area is workouts that maybe are more poorly prescribed and are just long things all the time actually can increase your cortisol rate. So, well, what do I care about that? Well, a lot of people want better body composition. So if your cortisol levels go up, your stress level goes up. They're hand in hand usually, right? That means when our stress levels are high, usually we can't sleep well at night. Okay, when we can't sleep well at night, our body doesn't get the right type of repair going on. And when our body's not repairing well, well, it shows in our body. And guys, and especially keep uh, cortisol, you know, and stress hormone stuff in their lower, lower umbilical. Okay, so if you're someone who's working out hard and you're going, I just can't lose that last little bit of pooch around my gut, well, that may be a sign. There may be other reasons too, but that's where we want to look. Uh, the other area is training, and just the workout is not your only type of training you should be doing. No, that doesn't mean go back to jazzercise. That means we want to look towards post-workout uh, nutrition, right? Are you getting protein in within a 30-minute window of a workout? And some carbs if you have the right type of workout that needs that for recovery, right? Your nutrition overall, your mobility, your sleep, all these parts fit into body composition stuff. They fit into performance-based stuff. Um, and we need to take time on those too. So again, we want balance of the energy system work. We want balance outside of training too to make sure you guys are staying healthy and, and looking awesome. Okay, why do we have built-in rests? Right, built-in rest makes sure we get closer to the targeted energy system. So when someone says, hey, it's a, it's a, this sprint, this workout's a sprint. What does that mean? Right, I hear that sometimes. This is gonna be a sprint. Well, a sprint means it probably should be anaerobic, right? Because if it's any longer than that, we're using oxygen or carbs or something else as some type of fuel source. So if we do want to do a 100 meter sprint, and it's going to be a sprint, how long do we need to recover from that? Right, somewhere 10 to 12, really train sprinters 16, 20 times the output. Okay, we can go deep on that stuff. If someone really can hit that hard, like look at Usain Bolt. If he's going max out 100 once a day, he can really hit that. I mean, maybe in his training he's able to do more, but full on test, it's like, He's not, you know, he's not bringing that just every every minute on the minute. It's, it's going to be hard, not at nine and a half seconds, right? So we want the rest to do that for each area, okay? For aerobic, because that's longer and more consistent, the rest intervals are shorter, but also the output is shorter. We're not saying do a 100-meter sprint, rest 20 seconds, right? If we did that, if we said, hey, here's a 100-meter sprint, rest 30 seconds times 15, that's almost a one-to-one -one work rest. That's aerobic, right? That is aerobic. So again, you can take any tool you want. How we program it, how we fix the rest intervals is what creates the stimulus for us. So if you said, again, when someone tells me they did an hour of plyometrics, we always joke that they did an hour of aerobics because you can't keep that intensity up, an actual intensity, not grr, I'm training hard intensity, but force distance time intensity up for an hour with that output. We know you need certain amounts of rest. It, it's just how it works. So if we're training lactic endurance, lactic power, each of these have a certain rest interval. If we're training barbell cycling, certain rest intervals we're, we're looking for, want to get that closer and closer and closer to more power as this goes on. So you guys are moving faster, getting more work done in a short time is the goal. Okay, man, we're, we're eating up some time here. Hope, hope you're still along. Uh, number seven and eight are kind of the same question. I come three times per week. Should I attend classes on specific days to get the most out of my training? I say no. Uh, usually the way we do it is, again, depending on the way the gym asks for specifically in the, the layering of the weeks, whether we do a progression every Monday, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. There's a few ways we do that. I still try and make it balanced so that the people that aren't coming there every day get what they need and the people that are coming you know, uh, regularly, are also getting taken care of and not getting burned in the ground. So if you're on a three time or twice a week membership, come when you can. Again, knowing that if you're doing twice or three, three times a week, I believe you're probably doing something else with your fitness, right? Because three times a week uh, is really good, but you're probably going running once or riding your bike. You might be doing yoga. You have other stuff. And we also need to be working on nutrition, recovery, sleep, mobility, right? Uh, and sunshine. You know, get outside and get sun, early morning sun, before 9 a.m. if you can. Yeah, sorry, it's off off topic, but you need that too. 
It's run unlimited. Can I train every day following this programming? You can, but should you? Okay, if you're in the gym six, seven days a week, we know we're neglecting recovery. Okay, and even the top level athletes we work with have active rest days. They, they do, they need it. Your body needs to repair because we get stronger when we rest and recover, right? Working out is the systematic breaking down of your body. That's what training is. I'm trying to put the stimulus on you and your body's gonna get broken down. And so that's why we use nutrition as fuel, sleep, and all the other parts for recovery to build you back stronger. So if you are thinking still, I'm gonna beat myself up every day and I love it, hey, cool, have fun. That's, that's awesome, I'm not here to preach on what everyone in the world should be doing, but I am gonna say, if you are doing that and also wondering why aren't my one rep maxes go up, going up, why aren't my benchmark workout times going down, why is my body composition improving, well maybe we go hit five days a week, follow a more balanced approach, do some recovery work, get some Z1 days in there where we're just doing really light stuff for recovery to increase that, work on our nutrition, work out our, on our carb timing and our post-workout fuel timing, increase our sleep, sleep in a room with blackout curtains, and maybe we're gonna start feeling better. So uh, that'd be my approach on that. So you can, I, I make sure I'm not trying to beat everyone up every day, but also you have to be responsible for your own workout. And that's again where your coaches are gonna have a really big influence on you. Next one, what is the benefit of training cycles and what is the general structure you follow? Okay, so this is a question again, we could talk about this forever, so I'll give you a short overview. Uh, training cycles have a ton of benefit. They help make sure that we are giving progression to the work, right? That we do have a focus. We do have some sort of test that we're going to have uh, at the end of a cycle or every so often. Uh, again, part of this is built on what the gym owners and I discuss to say, hey, for this facility, we want to test every eight weeks, every quarter, every, you know, on, ongoing might happen. That, that's fine. But it makes sure that we are choosing the right movements for that cycle. If we're in a strength cycle versus a speed strength cycle, those are different areas. If we're working on increasing aerobic capacity, right, for right now, let's say that's what we want to mostly work on plus gymnastic skill and upper body pulling strength. Well, that's going to tell me a lot about the exercise selection we're going to do, what the, uh, the mix of the days are going to be, right? So without getting too deep into that, uh, they're good. Generally, I'd say about an eight-week cycle works really well for most gyms, whether we have a testing week or it's just kind of periodic testing throughout is up to what your, your facility likes. And I don't think there's a right or wrong way. It's, you know, uh, our job to make that work for you guys uh, based on what you guys need relative to your goals, relative to that first question of how do we figure this stuff out? What's your gym like? How big is it? What's the weather there? Right? We're probably not going to test a 5K run in the middle of December in Minnesota. If you want me to, we can. Talk to me. Yeah. Now you, I'll, I'll tell the gym that you asked for it. Okay? Uh, that will be it. Um, last one I have on here. I'm interested in competing locally. Do I need to do more than just show up and follow your programming? Um, generally speaking, we'll get into first, and then we'll get into individual parts of this. Uh, locally, yeah, you should be fine because you're looking to have fun. You're looking to have markers in your training. I believe everyone should have training markers there uh, that they are using your fitness for something, whether it's a 5K, a, a, a mud run, a local competition, body composition check-in, whatever. You should have something. Everyone needs to be accountable. Without accountability, we drift. Okay, so that said, you should be good. But here's where, again, the coaches come in. I'm I'm really big on helping your coaches do this to the best of their ability. So that means just doing what uh, I put on paper or on the Google Doc doesn't mean that's the end-all be-all. If you are someone who is stronger than you are enduring and you have a weightlifting background and you want to do a local comp, well, guess what are you and your coaches maybe going to work on a little more in the build-up? That's right, weightlifting. No, I'm kidding. Uh, aerobic power, aerobic conditioning, right? That may mean that if I say 75% of your cleans for this workout for three reps plus a run interval or whatever, you might be doing 50%. We're trying to keep you moving, right? And not have you at the end on your back bacon sizzling. I want to have you like, okay, hands on your knees and you're breathing, but we know that's aerobic now. We know that wasn't lactic. We know that wasn't anaerobic. 
I want to help keep you there, okay? So adjusting the weights there, making sure you're hitting the right stimulus, giving you the right skill work. If it is, you know, pull-ups and you're struggling on pull-ups, we might uh, do some adjustment areas in there to make sure you can increase those uh, for the competition. So generally speaking, yes. Now, depending on the level you want to do, you may need uh, additional programming from your coaches. You might come to them and say, hey, you know, uh, I have these two weaknesses. I'll bet you they can work with you on that. So, you know, talk to them. Uh, you may need individual programming on top of that. Who knows? That's, again, that, that's the individual part of this. For general parts for gyms, I'd say yes for local stuff. Should be just fine. If you're a gym that we do, like the fitness performance sport programming tiers for, where we do uh, three tiers of programming, right, for a gym, then you most certainly should because the sport programming should be pretty challenging and should be something to gear you up towards, you know, local competitions pretty easily uh, on there. Um, so that's the questions I got. I'd love to hear your feedback on this, your thoughts. Um, if you made it to the end, thank you very much. I think you're, you're going to get a lot more out of your training from hearing this and putting up with me. If you have more questions you want to have uh, heard, message me. Put in the comments or email me at tim at juicecompound.com or ask your coaches because we can keep doing this every so often. I love getting to talk about this. If there's specific areas here you want me to dive into deeper detail, let's talk about those two. And in the meantime, uh, train hard, train hard, have fun, and uh, be awesome. Okay, guys, thank you so much.